Learning Unreal is hard, like really hard. It's the steepest learning curve I've had learning any visual effects software yet. Over the last year, I've been on a mission to learn Unreal Engine to create films of my own. And today I wanna to share the entire process with you. What's up? My name is Josh Tunin and I'm a director and visual effects supervisor and I've spent the last eight years working on Hollywood visual effects. But everything changed last year when Unreal 5 dropped. Unlimited polygons, real-time global illumination. In short, CG became real-time. Around that time last year, I was hired at Pixamundo to join their virtual production team and operate on the world's largest LED volume in Vancouver, working on Avatar The Last Airbender. So today, I'll be walking you through my journey of learning Unreal Engine and teach you the most important lessons I learned along the way, and hopefully leave a roadmap for myself from one year ago to speed up the learning process. The first project I ended up doing is very traditional, like many others before me. Sometimes the best way to start is to take a bunch of Quixel assets, some of these great free assets that Epic has supplied, and just start throwing them into a scene to really start understanding how all of the systems work together. And during these early projects, follow the fun. Follow what is actually enjoyable to learn. I was messing around with the fracturing tools, a lot of the landscape tools, and just flying around, getting comfortable with Nanite and really trying to push geometry detail, a really high dense geometry in the foregrounds. At this stage, I think it's really important just to focus on setting up a single camera, focusing on making a nice composition and playing around with how the lighting and geometry systems. Don't worry about animation, anything like that. Just worry about creating a, a still scene with static objects. And one fun thing I learned on this one too was using gobos, you can see on the right side here, basically large dark shapes that you can use to cover the sun and really art direct some of your shadows. I just made a very large plane with a noise texture on it and start easily breaking up the harsh sunlight. And then I took this level and started using it to learn the animation systems. So this was the first shot that I assembled together and it, there's a lot of stuff going on, so I'll start to break down what the layers are. First one is Mixamo Motion Capture Animations. This is a model straight from Mixamo. Um, things like the drones and the lightsaber were just very quickly assembled, taking assets off of online stores like CG Trader and Turbo Squid and quickly assigning those, bring those into the scene, doing basic textures, and really just try to focus on getting everything working together. Another key piece of advice at this stage is don't waste time modeling. Find pre-existing assets. There's enough to learn without tackling modeling at the same time. This was also a deep dive into the Niagara system and trying to make these different chains of events that work together. And I'll go into more detail on that later. But lesson number one is you're learning a game engine, not a render engine or a visual effects engine. You are learning a game engine first and really understanding that at a fundamental level from the beginning is very, very useful. You can't avoid learning the game engine side of Unreal. If you ignore it, troubleshooting becomes insanely difficult and frustrating. And to be honest, when I first started on this project, there were several times where I had to stop dead in my tracks and I didn't understand how to even render some of these things. This is the reason why the learning curve is so steep and why it can feel really intimidating at any point in the chain of processes that you're trying to understand from you know lighting, scene assembly into animation and sequencer and then rendering through movie render queue. In between each of these steps, something can go wrong and when you're first starting, it will go wrong. But Unreal is at its best when all of these systems are interacting together and I have a great example with the Niagara system that I set up in the last scene. This is a fairly basic setup here, but it kind of illustrates the power of Unreal versus some of the traditional VFX packages where you really are hand animating every single step. So if I go to game mode, we can see this. these are just two simple Niagara particle systems here that I called muzzle tracers. And this is a dynamic effect system where there are a chain of events going on. We have the muzzle flash spawning. We have a bullet uh, moving from this system. We have a light trail following the tracers themselves. And if we look a bit closer, uh, I also designed these 
bursts that will explode on impact and based on the angle of the impact will actually spawn the particle system in the opposite direction so that we get the, the correct impact. And as we move this, the base particle system here and we take this drone and we move them through the scene, we can really quickly see that the entire system will start to move with them. And right here, I'll just hit shift and drag along here and you can see that the particles and the impacts and everything start to move with it. Uh, I wanted to take this one step further in the finished shot itself. So if we go down here to shot 20 and I view the camera cut here, I'll just press play. We can see that all of these different drones have these same Niagara system parented to them. And very quickly, we can see that this entire swarm of different drones behind them in the far distance all can have the same Niagara systems parented to those. And very quickly, you can add a lot of complexity that still has a very rigid sense of logic behind it, like a muzzle tracer that I'm showing off here. Another extremely important lesson, the show-stopping issue that I came across when I was first putting this shot together is the fact that when you are rendering in movie render queue, what is actually happening is you are simulating your game. This is very, very important. And we can see when I press play here, the drones, we had them at a certain point switch from animated to simulated. And the physics are then simulated after just one or two keyframes of animation pushing them down very quickly the simulation and gravity starts taking over and we can see that the impacts become new and random each time. And then we could bring this in with Take Recorder, record these different physics simulations and get very different results, but all logical results that make sense in this scene. So the next project I did was taking this International Space Station model and trying to design a simple world around it and really trying to understand Lumen and the lighting system at a very fundamental level. These are some of the shots that came out of it. And this was taking it from a full round trip from Unreal through Movie Render Queue and then rendering it in Nuke. Uh, again, very basic animations here, but really just focusing on every step of the chain working together before going too complex. Uh, again, keep in mind that I wasn't able to render out the previous shot because I didn't understand how the simulation uh, part of Unreal was working. So this was a great practice just to focus on animation, camera animation specifically, and rendering it out and doing a full round trip into Nuke in Aces in linear color and getting those crisp highlights, lens flares, things like that, all interacting and working together so that ideally you could render directly out of Unreal into a Nuke template that does all of these interesting lens effects all in one step. This next project was a very simple pared down idea just to really focus on art direction and Niagara systems. On this one specifically, you can see some of these emitters for the different smoke, this little pot emitter here. I found a really interesting clip from Gladiator, the Ridley Scott movie, and I wanted to recreate something that had a bit more depth and just to match something that was completely photoreal and try to understand what that would take inside of Unreal, basically taking different images of smoke that uh, are chosen at random that will make up and break up the, the smoke texture that's being emitted and then finding interesting ways with curl noise to break up the look of the smoke here. I also was playing around with fire and sub UV flipbooks. So these are flipbooks that are in the material themselves, basically 64 frames baked into a 2K texture that will loop forever so that you can place these elements in your scene and they will just continue to animate and you set it and forget it. And now you just worry about the cameras and the characters in your scene after that. And if you haven't noticed, there are so many different menus in Unreal, which is why lesson number two is so important, and that is learn one editor at a time. Each menu in Unreal is basically its own plugin, its own separate program within Unreal. The material graph is its own editor. The static mesh editor is its own editor. This has completely different settings than our materials do. And you have to learn the entire pipeline for each of these editors one at a time. There are different careers that spend their entire time in just one of these editors within Unreal. So as a VFX artist and as a generalist trying to use Unreal for VFX, it's really important to have a fundamental understanding of each of these. And I've laid out a very simple learning path for what you should learn first. 
I would definitely start with the material graph. Very quickly, you can bring in Quixel assets, import those directly into your scene, and start playing with the material instances that come with Quixel Megascan assets um, automatically, as well as understanding the master material editor. The next step is lighting. This can get overcomplicated very quickly. The main building blocks of a good scene, a good exterior lighting scene, is a directional light, which is your sun, a sky atmosphere, and your skylight. If I had each of these one at a time, you can see you need all three of these to build up your scene. The sky atmosphere gives us the time of day, and the skylight is what gives us fill light in our scene. The next step is animation, and this is where we're really leveling up our skill set. We're gonna start with Sequencer, where we can add actors into a timeline and create animations, whether they're simple or complex, and you can do character animation, you can take pre-existing animations and assign them to characters. Then we have Movie Render Queue, which we're gonna use to render out our timelines. And then we have our characters and our effects, all of the characters and that information can be found in the skeletal mesh editor. And Niagara is our particles and dynamic effects system for your scene. So the next project was the first time where I was putting all of these lessons that I put together into one piece of previous animation, characters, crowd, and this time even using a virtual camera. This was taking the virtual production techniques that have been used on films like James Cameron's Avatar and Ready Player One and starting to put all of the pieces together to really tell a story, figuring out how to take these clips and different small sequences and bring them into a timeline in order to tell a story. Eventually I will release this, but this was a huge learning opportunity on how to take all of these different pieces of animation, go through retargeting and IK retargeting, which is new in Unreal 5, and putting all of this together in a timeline. And funny enough, things like crowds actually become much easier when doing them inside of Unreal, especially when you're reusing a lot of the same character rigs. It adds a lot of simplicity to what would otherwise be a complex issue. This is another topic. I will do a full on-depth video on how to take Mixamo motion capture animations and apply them to different character rigs, whether they're Mixamo rigs themselves or characters outside of Mixamo, like these soldiers that we have here. This was definitely a shift away from high detail, focusing on the nitty gritty, typical visual effects things and going into the animation and craft of making a film. I did not want to get bogged down by all of the small technical details. This was really about an actor in front of the camera and capturing that, staying with a character and seeing how intimately I could tell a story. I also tried out different virtual camera techniques like parenting myself with my virtual camera to a virtual dolly so I could track alongside of some of the soldiers as they're running. I'd be able to keep up with them and pan the camera to get the shot that I wanted. This was also a very big deep dive into blueprints and making a virtual camera system from scratch using the equipment and setup that I currently had available, which was using the cage of my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and a wireless HDMI transmitter and a simple monitor at the top. Uh, I paired that with the Vive virtual reality tracking system and just threw a controller on the top, as you can see from this picture here, and that was enough to get this rig up and running. I haven't really touched on it yet, but one of the most important lessons I learned along the way was to use sample projects. Epic Games has released so many AAA quality projects for free. You may have heard of the Matrix demo and some other ones, but I made a list of some of my favorites that I found really helped speed up my workflow and you can use to speed up yours and understand how these complex systems work together. The first one was the Meerkat demo where you get to see how Weta Effects is thinking about constructing a cinematic out of Unreal 4. Uh, in this case, you may have to download Unreal 4 just to open the project, but it is absolutely worth it. And I actually got started using Unreal 4 before Unreal 5 had launched. The second one is the Medieval Project. This was put out by the Quixel team and they really brought photorealism and art direction, like something you'd see on the PlayStation 5 or any other modern title. They really pushed uh, both the quality of the assets and the lighting, but also optimization and performance, which was really helpful when working on the virtual production LED volume stage. 
The third project is Slay, the animation sample. This really helped me understand how you can nest subsequences inside of Sequencer to make complex shot work quite simple. And lastly, as I mentioned before, was the Matrix demo. You really cannot find a better demo, which is essentially Grand Theft Auto in Unreal Engine and seeing how all of these things work together. Uh, very high quality Quixel assets. There's also plenty of vehicle packs, asset packs that they launched with this that you can find on the Epic Games Marketplace. And pro tip, here's how you can quickly migrate the sample projects into projects of your own. Here I have the ArchViz template loaded up. And let's say you wanted to grab this water shader and bring it into your own project. All you have to do is we'll click the little browse icon next to the material itself or whatever asset you wanna migrate. We'll go to asset actions and don't go to export, press migrate. Here it'll generate a list of dependencies of everything in the project that you need to transfer over. And from there, just choose the destination of where you wanna migrate it to, navigate to the content folder, and that's it. You can very quickly migrate everything over in just a couple clicks. This is another example of the vehicle starter content example that I started bringing in to understand how I could take gameplay elements and incorporate them into scenes of my own. Here I was able to drive around a car and start modifying that blueprint. And here, funny enough, uh, I'm just pressing the M key to flip the car. So it would add a physics force to start flipping the car. And very quickly, you can see how you can take these small events and different simple blueprints and start chaining them together to do way more complex animations. This brought me into my next film project, which I'm calling Heat Seeker. I was starting to get obsessed with this idea of this windsurfing racing league, almost a Saturday morning cartoon that you could create as a cinematic in Unreal. So I took what I learned from the car configurator and started to take these really simple models and start to create a controller based off of them that would dynamically interact based on how you're driving it. From there, I tried to see what it would take to bring a character and parent them and parent different IK rigs to different parts of the windsurfing controller. Here I literally took the Mixamo girl, the, the character right off the home screen of Mixamo, just as a way to assemble this as fast as I could and suss out the concept. And very quickly was able to have this drifting racer that dynamically moved and shifted based on how the physics of the vehicle was interacting with the world where you press a key and she'll bounce with a little extra weight just to add impact to the driving. I added another control to the sail so it would shake with intensity the faster the vehicle was moving. From here, I started building out this little world. To be honest, it again, it does not always work. Some things just break and is it, a lot of it is hard to figure out. But I pressed on and a, a few weeks later, put together this previs for Heat Seeker, which puts all of these moving pieces together, the moving vehicles, the physics interactions, and also take recorder to record some of the physics, and then go back in and animate the camera around to tell a story of the Mixamo girl racing through this favela desert against these dune buggy racers, and add some interesting physics interactions and just see what I could do in this little playground. I used the landscape tool as well to sculpt out the road so there were bumps that would actually cause the vehicles to move up and down as they're racing through the desert. And this is a look at the final result. Again, I will definitely break this down in much further detail. There's a lot that goes into just a one minute project like this that I cannot wait to share and go in depth and teach you how you can make your own chase sequences fairly quickly inside of Unreal. If you're with me this far, it's because you are serious about trying to learn Unreal, so I wanted to include this bonus tip, and that is the question of what sample projects should I be downloading and learning based on my skill level. So I've included a free download for a PDF. It includes all the links and what you can learn specifically from each of these projects that you can incorporate into the next project you're making yourself. I feel like I'm saying project like 49 times throughout this video, but We'll just have to deal with it. Once Avatar The Last Airbender had wrapped here in Vancouver, I'd been working on some horror projects on the side and trying to figure out interesting ways 
to play with the depth that you could have inside of a scene. And I wanted to see what animation would look like on an LED volume. So this test was really to see what this animation looks like when shot through a camera, what sort of lighting and interaction could we cast onto the actors in the scene, and how could we make this mind-bending, twisting, turning tunnel and make it as cool as possible. And an interesting test here was seeing what it would take to have a virtual foreground. So even though everything is shot with an LED screen behind Nick here, we were cheating some of the depth so you could actually have the environment look like it's coming in the foreground and defocused like it would look like through a camera lens. All right, lesson four, documentation. But I think Unreal's documentation is notorious for being difficult to follow. Um, this has probably happened to you where you think you know what you need to find, but you just simply can't find what you're looking for. Now that Unreal is in 5.1, and I'm sure we'll update more throughout the year, uh, you're kind of backtracking through all these different documentations and also different forum posts that may or may not apply to the current version of Unreal. So I want to make a simple slide here. It's simple, but very, very effective, I believe, of how to actually get the most use out of the documentation that Epic has given for Unreal 5 and beyond. And that is two very simple things. One, are you trying to learn a workflow or are you trying to learn a feature or a plugin? The first thing you should always try to understand is the workflow of how do these systems work together. And once you know how these things work together, it's much easier to go into the feature or the plugin itself where you can use F11 and it'll just pop up the documentation that you need for the editor that is currently open. So we can see here with this lighting the environment example, it gives us a very clear top-down view at how all these different options and systems work together, mobility, and you can kind of follow this in order and have a pretty deep understanding of lighting by the end of it. This would be the workflow page and these individual menus would be the actual features and the plugins that we're using inside of Unreal. The important note here and the important distinction, look through this outline on the left-hand side, find what you need this way, and once you find these macro workflow pages, you can dive into the individual features and use this as your mini course on the different feature sets within Unreal. Another tip that is insanely helpful and has gotten me out of binds so many times, so it's not here for everything, but if you hit Control and Alt and hover over any of these different detail panel options, it will give you definitions and some of them will even directly link to the documentation so you can really start to understand and fit that in context with the rest of the system. And now for the rest of the year, I wanted to take a closer look at what it takes to achieve photorealism out of these game engine renders and really work on lighting and attempting many different lighting scenarios in the same scene. So the last lesson here is to start and finish your small projects. This is absolutely the best way to learn Unreal, is not spending a bunch of time on one really long project. When you're first learning this software in particular, especially when you look through the game dev side and the tutorials that will bring you down that path of Unreal, it is very, very clear that the first month, two months, even three months of work that you're doing in this it really is just to learn how all of these things work together. There are just so many small things that you'll end up discovering when you're playing uh, that it is just much better to make 30 small projects, one a day for an entire month, than one really long, big project over 30 days. You'll get much more out of working on these smaller projects. It is not enough to just watch tutorials. You have to do it for yourself. You have to think of unique problems and figure out solutions on how to solve it. It is now up to you to think like an engineer, think of how to build the systems that you need around you. And when you're able to think in that way, even as just an artist in this pipeline, you can take full advantage of Unreal Engine as a game engine and use it for projects of your own. Thank you for sticking around this far. To wrap this up, I wanna show you test renders that I was doing for a Mr. Freeze project in this Batman Beyond world. Um, testing, again, the full pipeline from rendering all the way into Nuke and giving it that final polish pass that I'm used to in the visual effects world. And by this time, because I've kind of gone through the whole character pipeline and done all these steps so many times, it was just a much faster process 
to start from scratch, take a model, rig it, do IK retargeting with mix amount animations, stick it in a scene, put it in sequencer, and you can quickly start to see how what was once a very complex process to set up, now that I've gone through the ringer and done it a few times, it becomes much faster and you just know exactly how these systems work together. And do not get me wrong, there are always problems. It will never stop happening. That is the painful part, but also the fun and rewarding aspect of Unreal is beating your head against the wall until you finally find the right answer. In this case, it usually is just a simple checkbox hidden somewhere deep inside Unreal. But I hope this was helpful and provides a really top-down view of how you can start learning Unreal for yourself and where that can take you, how you can use that to develop pipelines of your own and use it to create films and visual effects shots quickly and take advantage of the real-time aspect of Unreal. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna learn more. I'll be deep diving on each of these projects so you can speed your learning process up and learn the exact steps that I took. Definitely subscribe and check out the PDF in the description where you can learn what sample projects you should download based on your current skill level. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.